Hello Falcons! This is Ms. Gonzalez, your Eastlake Librarian, and I'm here to show you how to access your research tools for your conspiracy theory project. You will be using the LibGuide. We used it last time for your historical narrative. Um, so just a little uh, reminder how to get there. So meet me at the Eastlake Library page. Once you're here, you will be scrolling over to Quick Links. And right at, under Quick Links, you'll find at your library. Go ahead and click there. This will direct you over to our Eastlick library page. Within our symbol loop, you will find the LibGuide icon right next to the Google search bar. Click that. You will also have a list of LibGuides and I need you to locate the one that is titled Eastlick High School Conspiracy Theories. Go ahead and click that. And this will bring you straight to our Conspiracy Theory Project. But before we get ready to click um, and view all our resources, why don't we go ahead and log in to Mac and Via. So up here, um, go back to the library welcome page. So you should have a tab up on the top of your search bar and you'll see the library page again. Once you're here, go ahead and click on Mac and Via and log in. It should take you to the Microsoft login window. Um, let's see where it takes me. And it should log us on with Microsoft 365 like this. Um, so once you click there, make sure you click the Microsoft 365 and it'll automatically log you in with your login from credentials from Socorro. Once it finishes its process and links, it's going to show you your East Lake High School Mac and Via and you'll see your name here. Um, we'll leave this available so that it could link when we open all our resources. So let's go back to our LibGuide. So our LibGuide here does have a variety of resources for you. Note that they're here for, for assistance. Um, you don't have to click on every single bit of links that I provided for you click on the ones that are going to help you accomplish and achieve your um, your A, your 100, right? So right here on research tips and tools, I do have a variety of steps that you can follow to guide you with your research process from understanding the project to your final presentation. Further down here, you have fact check sites in case you, we want to check some of our information that we're finding for our conspiracy. You do have some fact check sites. Right below that our formatting on APA style. Your presentation and paper will be APA style. So this is a link to the EPCC lip guide with the APA information that they provide. Uh, one thing that I do want to remind you is we are using LibGuides because that is one of the tools that colleges use. So this, when you go to college and you're using LibGuides, you're, they're not going to be foreign for to you. You will be used to them. Uh, further down, we have Conspiracy Theories Pro Research Project. This is information from your teacher um, as far as um, Conspiracy Theory Project. So then they also have a little tidbit here on what you're actually doing. So please read this to it so you can know exactly what is expected from you. And then to further just outline the project, you do have what your final PowerPoint presentation needs to include right here. Scroll back up here. Um, bring your attention to this guy right here. This is a copy of an ebook that we have in our databases. Since our Mac and Via is already logged on, it should automatically take you there. So if I click there, it will open for me automatically. Um, in case it does not open for you, it's okay. Um, we're having trouble 
configuring this login from home so um, I'm actually at home and it's opening up for me so um, give it a try if not that's okay I have a lot of other resources for you I'm gonna go ahead and close that and here we are back at our libguide let's go on and move on to our next area here on databases here we have a variety of databases um, that I have um, created the widgets for you all uh, these databases if you start searching here it's going to take you straight to the opposing viewpoints this one specifically in articles in Spanish in case you're interested in reading that uh, could I make on file Gale ebooks news so all of these are widgets and they'll take you straight into the um, database after you do your search please remember when you are using our databases please do not type in a question just type in your topic okay let's move on over to topic resources um, I did create um, for the most common conspiracies out there I went ahead and took the liberty of um, doing a little bit of research for you and um, giving you some hyperlinks that will automatically take you to the articles that I found in the, our uh, databases. Uh, there are plenty more believe me on JFK or Area 51 or Merlin Monroe there is plenty but I just pick these to get you started um, if you have one of these as your topics feel free to use my uh, research I already created for you um, also embedded uh, videos if I did find those videos and our videos come from the info based database that we have so let's go back up here I also gave you um, virtual library this one I created in the middle of the week so um, we did get some new ebooks that are re about conspiracy theories so these uh, books that I have here for you will take you right into the Mac and Via uh, page and they will give you the option of opening the book and reading it just straight from the catalog or checking it out okay just note you do have the ability to cite the book right here um, and we'll go over citations in a bit so then uh, the next step here I do have um, noodle tools and uh, we will practice citing our databases so just a reminder that we used noodle tools last time and we also used um, the Gale database. So once we're here, let's go ahead and get our Noodle Tools account linked. So click on the Noodle Tools icon right here. It's going to take you to this area here. We do not sign on through here. No, 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 no. Our new way of signing in is through our Microsoft 365. I know you used it, um, you used your account about two, three months ago. And I know you're going to say, I forgot my login. Well, guess what? Microsoft 365 takes you right into it. So click that. It's going to do its thing. Magic happens. And you are logged in. You will see your um, historical fiction project here. That will be here. And um, we are starting a new project. So go ahead and click on New Project right here you will have to give it a title name so your project title could be conspiracy theories or if you are um, researching 9-11 you can go ahead and put type it in as conspiracy theories on 9-11 or uh, JFK and my conspiracy theory anything you want to name it so that you can remember that it is the project for the conspiracy theory project um, title it up here you will also need citation style as we we um, were informed on the previous link that you um, need to do APA citations right here citation level you are going to go to the advanced right here 
and you're going to go ahead and click Submit. So as a recap, you need a project title, citation level, I'm sorry, citation style, and citation level, AP Advance Submit, and it will take you straight into your project like this. Okay, so I do have this project from the other classes, so you are going to see a little bit of extra writing on here, but um, you do have an area to write your research questions right here. In case your teacher is asking for you to do a research question, you type it right here. Then you need to um, also have an area here in case you uh, need to write your thesis statement. Um, you type, 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 anything you type. And once you click out of the box, it's automatically safe within your Noodle tools. Further, I do know that your teacher is going to ask for you to share the project with your teacher. So you need to come right over here where it says share with a project inbox. Find that area to click. Once you find it, you click and you're going to share your project inbox with uh, Yala. Um, there it is. So he does have um, his classes built in already. So depending on what period you're in, note, notice that he put Ayala First Spirit Conspiracy. So if this is First Spirit, you click on that. If this is uh, Third Period, Ayala Third Period Conspiracy, you click on here. So depending on your course name or period, um, go ahead and pick that for your period or your course. Make sure it's the right period so that he can see the assignment. If it's not on the right period, he's going to be like, who the heck is this Johnny in the seventh period? I don't have a Johnny seventh period. I do have one in the first period, but not in seventh period. And um, you might not get a grade because you are in the wrong period. So go ahead and click the right period. You should have your first name, last name here from the past project. If you don't, go ahead and write it up. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and click on done. Okay, once you have your project shared, uh, we're going to go ahead and move over to sources up here. So we've already done projects. That's where you actually create your project. We're on the dashboard once your project is open and ready to go. And now we're going to go over sources. Once you're here on the sources, as I noted um, earlier, I do have my sources already here, but these are from your previous um, classes that I was working with. So yours should have nothing on here because you have not exported or done any research. Um, just to kind of show you, um, in case you want to get rid of citations, you just clearly click them here. You go to the top, you hit the delete button and you say, are you sure you want to delete them? Yes, and they go away, okay? So just to reduce the number of citations to avoid confusion, I'm gonna go ahead and delete those again and they are gone, okay? So now that I have uh, my project open and I do have my um, Conspiracy Theory project open as well, I'm going to go ahead and go to the topic resources. Since I have these links available here, I'm going to go ahead and click on one just to remind you how to export citations. So I'm going to click on assassination of John F. Kennedy. It's going to link me over to the database and it's going to um, take me right to it because I am already linked with the Mac and VM. So I'm going to be reading along and I'm reading along and I'm going to be like, oh, this right here is perfect. I am going to use this here um, and I'm just highlighting. But note that you do have the option once you let go of the highlight, you can actually highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and use this right here as one of my sources to uh, make a point in one of my slides for my presentation. So 
I'm gonna have to cite this specific article. So if you know up here you have a variety of options and I'm gonna go ahead and use cite right here. Click that. You'll have your citation. Uh, just a friendly reminder that the default citation is MLA. We're not using MLA. So we're gonna go ahead and click on APA. Once you click it, it'll automatically format it to APA citation. And what I'm gonna do now, since I am using my export feature and I'm using Noodle Tools, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Noodle Tools right here. Noodle Tools will open another window. Um, here is a citation that the database is providing for me and export it over. Um, if it looks okay, then I'll use it. Just a reminder that sometimes, for some strange reason, um, you will have all caps. Assassination of JFK, all caps. If you see that, it's like, no, no, no. So go ahead and fix it. Make any changes you want to make here. And once you have those changes, go ahead and go down here with this project. You should have your project name right here. I named mine sample and you will have import reference here. So once you are ready to export your or import your citation, make sure your article, I'm sorry, your project name is here and then you click import reference right here. Click, you do get a green line here saying that it was successfully exported to project sample, name sample. You should have the name of your project right here. Once you see green, I'm going to close that window because the Noodle Tools still has my other window here. I don't see my citation, so I have to refresh. Click on source, it refreshes, and here is assassination of JFK. Okay, right here. It didn't give it to me up here as in sequence of ex of the way it's exporting because they are alphabetized because your citation sheet, your bibliography will have to be in an ABC order. So one more time, just to recap really quick, I'm going to come right back up here and I'm going to um, export another one. So I'm going to click on who shot JFK. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to read blah, 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 blah. I want to quote this right here. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and color it blue this time. I'm going to quote this right here. Find my site button up here. Click. I This is MLA. I am not using MLA. I am using APA. Change it over. Export to Noodle Tools right here. Click that. And here's my citation. It looks okay. Let's scroll down here. I am under project sample because I named it creatively sample. And I am going to import reference. I get my green light. I'm successfully exported project to sample. And I'm going to go ahead and close it. So it takes me back to my noodle tool window. Click refresh source again. And Voila, here it is. So now this time, who shot JFK? It was moved down here to Holland because it is in alphabetical order. This, just an FYI, I have my author's name here um, and then the title of my article. Here, I only have the title of my article because they probably do not have an author to write or to it, um, either it's anonymous or there's no author for this specific article. They don't, they couldn't find the author, so they didn't give you the author's name. So in this case, there is an author, so author goes first. So that's just little differences that you might see. But thanks to Noodle Tools and Gale, we don't have to search frantically for authors. They'll tell us if they have them and if or they don't. Further down, um, our teachers want us to do a uh, an annotated bibliography. So, in order to do that, you are going to come on over here under Options 
and you are going to go to under the edit mode right here. This will take us behind the scenes to the manual area of creating a citation. Check out how the computer already gave you all the information. They gave you the, um, the URL, the name of the database, the author, the article. So everything is already filled out for you. You don't have to do anything here. You do have to come over here towards this annotation and this is where you, you type your annotation. Once you're done typing, you click save and it is going to save it within your source over here. I type your annotation. So it's going to save it right there. Okay. Recap again. Find the article that you are writing the annotation about. Click on options. Go to edit. Scroll all the way to the bottom because you don't have to do anything else. It's already done for you. Under annotations, you type in your annotation. You have to save it. It will not save automatically. Since you're editing, you have to completely save it. Once you save, it'll take you over to your citation and you can see what you included in your annotation. Okay. Further, since you are citing because it is important to cite so you can tell your author where your information is coming for, from. This will avoid the whole plagiarism drama. So click over here on options, find in-text citation, and Noodle Tools will just hand you what you need to write at the end of your sentence. And it like literally tells you here, at the end of your sentence, plop this right here. You do have a little area here where it says page number. In case you are reading a book and you will might get a, um, you might use one of the ebooks as resources, as a reference, you need to include the page number where that specific quote came from or where that specific uh, comment came from. So where is this page number here? If you would type in your page number that you have your ebook from, um, if you type in 100, it magically pops it up here. So if it's a book and you have, or a copy, if, if it's an ebook and it automatically copies the pages and you have a page number, type it up here and it'll bring it up here. If it's a database article, you will more than likely not have a page number. So don't need a page number, but you do need to delete this whole P and page number area. So when you copy paste, don't copy paste that because you don't have a page number. Furthermore, you will have the access and the ability to go and search some non-academic sources. So this is the project that teachers are going to let you go explore the World Wide Web. So how do you cite that? Check this out. Once you come over here under New Sources, you will have the chance to cite a website. So click that. Once you're there, you will need to click on Web Page. This is the background that we saw earlier. So you have nothing on here. So now it's your job to find a URL, copy paste there. You have to look through the whole web page and see if you can find a date of publication. If you find one, perfect. Plop it in here. If you don't, then just don't type in a date most recent date access. If you click here, it'll pop in the date that you actually looked at the web page and that is a requirement. So that's easy to fill. You will come over here on contributors. So you need to find and see if 
you can find the author, the editor, or the translator of the web page. If you do, type in their first names, middle name, last name. If you do find one, great. If you don't, don't worry. If you find one that has multiple contributors, click on the plus and you can add more contributors. Scroll over here. Web page or document article title. This is a must. See the little asterisk? You have to write a title for your web page or your article. Um, over here, name of the website. Type up if you find the name of the website, that more than likely you will find that. And then finally, it'll take you to the annotations and this is where you're gonna type in your annotation. You type in blah, 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 and then you hit save and it's going to create your citation, okay? Further, for those ebooks that we have on the library, the electronic library that I created, you can also go to new source and you can do a ebook right over here and you are going to cite an ebook. So once again, you can start typing in the URL, the DOI, you can find that on the ebook, first name, last name, as much as information as you can and then um, paste it, your, go to your annotation area here and write up your annotation right here as well. Don't forget to hit save. So just to further on the ebook citation, a friendly reminder that your books are here on the virtual library so for example, if I click on this and I know it's a little overwhelming to find and look for the title and all of that on a book, but check this out. Um, you need to find, I don't know, this is not that important. Um, you might just get the URL that the Mac and Via gives you. But once you click on the book over here, as we did, and we see the book, before you open, you can scroll down here and you can see a bunch of information about the book, like the co-author in this case, um, the publisher, the year it was published. So over here on your Noodle Tools, you can type in the author it was a co-author so you can go ahead and write author um, you type in their name the title of the book the publisher the year it was published so you can find a lot of information for your citation right on this area here which that will give you some assistance and then Chrome scroll down here and type in your annotation and hit save go ahead and close that so now we do have um, our citations and we'll come back over here. So now we went over a little bit of the tab on Noodle Tools. Um, just some information here. All of these are extra tutorials from Noodle Tools webpage to include on how to create or access your account. Okay, so here are some more videos. I did include a lot of tutorials so that they can assist you and help you. Citation resources is your next tab and this will give you um, more tutorials on tips on citing with the APA citation style. So remember these are here to assist you and guide you. Then I do have built in more tutorials over here where you have um, Mac and Via tutorials on how to access Mac and Via, another tutorial on how to access and export citations, and just filled with tutorials on citations and how to avoid plagiarism. Exciting will avoid plagiarism. And the last tab is a video where um, I found this video that it is a uh, documentary conspiracy road trip pretty good pretty cool um, I have given you your teacher your username and password to access this video if you are interested in um, 
checking this out. Maybe it'll give you some ideas on how you can tackle this project as well with your conspiracy. So this is our lip guide for conspiracy theory project. I hope um, this is helpful for you. If you have any questions, please email me, Ms. Gonzalez or Ms. Baker, and please note that we are here to help you. I will probably add more and continue to add more to the lip guide um, as we continue to build and have more tabs for you, for your assistance, you will see more coming your way. Thank you and have a great day.